Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today, I'm gonna to be piecing together this super pretty pastel gradient splatter puzzle from the brand Betaco. And this is actually gonna be my first ever Betaco puzzle. Um, I've been wanting to try them for ages. Uh, I just think they have a really great range of puzzles, a lot of colorful ones, and they're sort of done by a variety of artists. And I've also heard some really great things about them in the puzzle community, like that they have some pretty good quality and the brand itself is really good. So yeah, I'm super keen to try them. Um, so this one here, like I said, it's called Gradient Splatter and yeah, basically features these really pretty pastel pinky blues and it's sort of a kind of, I think it's a mix between like a gradient and kind of like swirly paint. So yeah, it looks really interesting. I think it might be kind of tricky. Um, this one is 1000 pieces, so it's a reasonable size. And yeah, I, I think, yeah, it might be quite difficult. I'm not too sure, but I guess one thing's for sure, it's probably gonna look very pretty once it's done. So in a sec, let's unbox this, have a look at the packaging and the pieces and then get into some puzzling. So let's check out the packaging real quick and then we'll open it up. So as you've already seen, it's got the image on the front, but the image actually also wraps around the sides. Um, it's actually very kind of sleek and minimal looking packaging. There's not a lot of sort of information on here. It's basically just got on the front, the Betico logo, the name of the puzzle, which is Gradient Splatter Puzzle. And then it just says it's 1000 pieces. And then this side has nothing but the image. Uh, this long side, again, just has the logo without the name, the name of the puzzle and the pieces. What's on this side? Again, just the uh, excess image. And yeah, pretty much very simple. This side's just got the website www.betterco.com and it says uh, the assembled size, which is 27.5 by 20 inches. I will put that in centimeters on the screen, but I think from memory that's pretty standard 1000 piece size so but we'll find out soon enough and then on the back it's very plain it just simply has a barcode the name of the puzzle and designed in Oregon made in China um, and before I open it up it's a very like quite a sleek uh, and sturdy feeling box it feels really nice and it's really nicely designed instead of just being a flat box it's actually got a little beveled edge around each side on the top to make it feel a bit more fancy, which I quite like. And yeah, it feels very sturdy, like not too bendy or anything. So, you know, and it's, yeah, very quite thin and not too big. So I feel like, uh, you know, it would be pretty easy to store. Like you could probably stack it without it getting bent or store it on your shelf. And also if you had it sideways on your shelf, it would look quite pretty because you've got just this sort of hint of image. So that'd be cool if you had a whole bunch of these and just seeing like the sides. So anyway, let's open it up if we can. It's a little bit tricky to get the lid off. One eternity later. Oh my goodness, I thought we'd never get there. Oh, okay, so the inside the lid is just plain, um, but we've got a few things in here, so Okay, it's got a little leaflet that is basically, you know, sign up to like, I guess their mailing list and get 20% off as a VIP and it's got a few of their puzzles here and talks about the founder. So yeah, that's cool. And then, oh, this is cool. It looks like we've got a little mini sort of poster of the whole image. So yeah, that's nice. Like, I think that's a reasonable size. Maybe it could be a little bit bigger, but I, I'm not too fast. I mean, especially on a simple design like this, I think this is completely fine. Um, it's also got the logo on it. And it says, share your progress, tag us on Instagram and has their little Instagram uh, handle. So yeah, that's kind of nice that it includes a poster. And then also, uh, yeah, it's yep, just playing around this bottom part of the box as well. And yeah, it looks like it just comes in a sort of non-reusable bag. And just looking at the pieces, um, they look, they look like pretty normal. They look a little bit bigger than some brands. Like they're probably a similar size or a tiny bit bigger than some of the Ravensburger pieces, but definitely bigger than something like Cloudberries 
um, or Gibsons, like, and they look like a brown uh, cardboard backing. But let's open them up and have a closer look. Again, it probably would have been nice. This is my my all-time rant. It would have been nice if it came with a Ziploc bag, especially since the like the box feels really nice quality and it comes with the the poster. So that would have been a nice little extra touch, I think. But um, you know, this is what we've got to work with. I have to say the pieces are definitely looking very pretty. So I'll pop that over there. It smells very cardboardy. Oh, okay. The pieces feel very lightweight, actually. I don't know why I was expecting expecting it to be heavier, but maybe because of the box or something. So I feel like this is a little bit different than any puzzle I've done for a while. Um, so yeah, the pieces are they a sort of standard cut. They kind of are a little bit like um, standard cut, but with some of them have are a little bit wonky or a little bit skewed. So. I'll pop a close-up photo in the corner, but yeah, they're definitely like slightly irregular, I want to say. Not like Springbok kind of irregular, but things just feel a little bit, a little bit skewed. So yeah, um, but they're still kind of roughly like regular ribbon cut shapes, I guess. So they're not too like weird. Um, but yeah, I thought that's interesting. Like I haven't seen too many puzzles like that. And they're very pretty, like they look, I really love the sort of pastel colors of them um, and even the little paint splattery dots and things, they just look really, really pretty. So, um, yeah, so basically they are like a, they're a little bit thin. They're not super thin, like they, they're still, let's see, they're, they're definitely a little bit bendy, like you could, you could definitely bend them, I think, um, but I don't think think they're gonna bend too easily on their own in the box but yeah if you weren't careful you possibly could bend them a bit like I'll keep an eye out in case there's any damaged ones but so far not really oh well, actually I've just found one where the little tab is a little bit a little bit bent and some of the layers of the cardboard are kind of like expanding or splitting a little bit but it's not super obvious so maybe that's yeah something I'll keep an eye out for um, but yeah, the, so the back is just this brownish cardboard, so there's no like extra paper layer, which is nice. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, pretty simple. But then the top is a very smooth and I would say kind of glossy finish. Like it's, they look pretty glossy. I can see the light hitting a lot of them. So that could make puzzling a little bit tricky, especially this design where I'm going to need to see the color difference quite well in order to put it together. I think that could be a problem. So it's going to be interesting to sort of see. Um, yeah, but yeah, the pieces, like I said, definitely sort of feel a little bit bigger than like Gibson's or something like that. And yeah, like slightly, ir slightly irregular. Um, yeah, but still reasonably firm and strong feeling and sturdy feeling. So. Hopefully I won't find too many damaged pieces or anything. Yeah, so, oh, actually I have found, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, basically it's a piece and the top part of one tab is like the whole colored sections come off. There's just a little bit of cardboard left. So, hmm, that's interesting, a bit of some quality issues. So hopefully I'll find that little bit of blue, this blue dot in here somewhere. Um, I haven't really seen that happening to many of my other puzzles, if at all, actually. So that's kind of a new one. I'm used to bent bits and things being a bit like papers coming off the back or things separating, but having the actual top of the tab ripped off is kind of a new one. So um, I'm definitely gonna be keeping an eye out for the quality with this one. Um, but apart from that, the pieces do feel fairly nice. Um, they're quite lightweight and um, yeah, they look really pretty. And also looking at the bag, there doesn't seem to be really much puzzle dust. Like it's a little dusty, but no big chunky bits of puzzle dust. And my hands feel a tad bit dusty. So um, I can see a little bit of it in the bottom of the box, but that's gonna be another thing to see. Like, is there much puzzle dust or not? Anyway, I think I've waffled on long enough about the pieces. So how am I going to put this one together? I don't know. Um, basically, 
it's not a sort of normal gradient. It's essentially like a bit of a two-toned gradient. Um, I mean, obviously there's gonna be different shades of blue and pink in here, but um, yeah, I, I think I have my suspicions this is gonna be kind of tricky. I have a friend on Instagram um, who's been doing this one and I think they've found it quite challenging. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be challenging for me as well. Um, but you know, I'm still looking forward to putting it together. I think it's gonna look really pretty when it's done. So I feel like even though it's just pink and blue, there's probably still enough variation in like the shapes and what's going on around the edges to maybe put the, the border together first. And then, I don't know, I feel like maybe I'll just pull out as much pink as I can and put those together. I feel like, you know, there's enough little swirls and interesting and like bubbles and things that I might be able to like identify certain pieces and certain areas and like even the blue down here it's quite different to other blues so yeah so maybe I'll try the pink first and see how hard it is see how I go um, so definitely expect things might change part way through as they tend to do um, but yeah I'm looking forward to piecing this one together so in a sec let's get into some puzzling
So I'm back after what feels like a million hours of puzzling. Uh, this puzzle has just been so difficult and time consuming. And I think so far, just to get to this, I guess, maybe just over halfway point, it's taken me at least eight and a half hours, maybe even eight and three quarters. So yeah, a really long time. That's probably the amount of time I would spend on a sort of average 1000 piece puzzle to get to the finished, like the finished point not to get like halfway. So yeah, this this puzzle has been taking a while. And like I've had to like do this in three sort of puzzling sessions um, just cause like I didn't wanna, I didn't have the time to sit here for a whole day and just puzzle. Not to mention this sort of puzzling, um, it kind of makes you really tired because you've, you don't have, well, this puzzle kind of really only has sort of two colors like this blue and then this sort of pinky color and it ends up being a lot of trial and error of like trying different piece shapes a lot. Like there's some parts that are easy. Like when I first started, I thought I was doing really great getting a lot of the pinks in, but then as the pinks became a bit more washed out and combining with the blue, it became a lot more difficult and it just sort of turned into like, you know, finding pieces that match the color the best you can and then just trying each piece shape and yeah, so quite tedious and time consuming. So to be honest, I am haven't been enjoying the puzzle all that much because this sort of style of puzzling is not really my thing. I think I'm just too impatient for this kind of puzzling or it's something where um, I would like prefer to do it, I guess, have a like not be so rushed in doing it and maybe do other puzzles while I'm doing this as well. Um, but that being said, it's turning out to be very pretty. Like I really do like the colors um, and like the sort of, I guess, design of the paint splatter gradient. Like it is very, very pretty to look at. Um, yeah, and this blue and pink are really gorgeous. Um, so yeah, apart from my feelings about like how it looks and putting it together, sort of just to sort of catch up on uh, like piece quality, um, there's, I haven't been that impressed to be honest. Like I think I mentioned earlier, there was a piece that's missing its little tab, which I thankfully have found the tab it's in the box, but it means I'm going to have to glue that on. But there's definitely been like, a hand, like at least a handful of pieces that have got like sort of bent little tabs or where like the, the cardboard layers are sort of splitting or are a bit bent. So yeah, I sort of feel like I was ex I was hoping that the better co quality was going to be of a higher standard, um, especially because to buy them on Amazon from Australia, like the price point is usually quite high. Like thankfully the sun was actually quite discounted, which is why I snatched it up and grabbed it. Um, but yeah, like for a high price point, I was expecting a bit more. And that being said, though, the fit is actually pretty reasonable. Um, like they seem to hold together pretty well. And like, well, okay, not always, but sometimes you can pick up sections. It's sort of a 50-50, like obviously that little bit just came off, but then you can pick up a lot of it, but then a lot sort of uh, like comes undone a bit. So I don't know if you'd be doing a puzzle pickup with this. It's probably a bit risky. Um, I don't know, yeah. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be keen enough to try a puzzle pickup at the end with this, but, but I feel like, you know, at least in terms of like moving sections around, it's it's okay. It's not the best. I've definitely had better, but it's it's good enough, I think. Um, and then in terms of like puzzle dust, I'm actually pretty impressed. There's not very much. Like there's only a few little specks here and there on the board, so that's actually really good. And then in terms of like glare, um, there is glare, but it's been somewhat problematic, but no more than like really any other puzzle with sheen or glare to be honest so even though these do seem very glossy and shiny um it hasn't really like it's been a a little bit problematic so some sections have been a little harder to see than others depending where the light's shining but i kind of have that problem with other puzzles too so i don't feel like it's particularly any worse for me than i've experienced with some other puzzles recently so yeah so yeah, anyway, I'm in a sec, I think I'm gonna, I don't know, fig figure out which blue tray to pick and I guess just start laying out pieces again um, and just 
yeah, keep trying to fit pieces in where I can until this thing's complete. Um, I'm not exactly looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this puzzle being done because I am kind of getting quite over it. Um, I sort of feel like I've spent way too long on this one puzzle and I, you know, I want to go do other things. Um, so I'm really looking forward to like having this done and being able to just admire it instead of actually just spending so long working on it. So wish me luck and I'm going to get on and hopefully finish this. I'm back and I have finally finished this puzzle. Um, so as beautiful and pretty as this puzzle looks, I am so glad it's over. I'm so glad to be done with it. Uh, I just found this puzzle so tedious and difficult and kind of boring in the end, to be honest. Um, I don't know why I thought looking at the box, it wouldn't be this difficult. I think I just really underestimated it or was maybe won over by the pretty colors. Um, but yeah, is, I would definitely consider this a challenge puzzle. Um, so all up, it took me over 11 hours, including sorting, to get to the finish point. Um, and for me personally, that's just way too long for a 1,000 piece. I just don't want to spend that much time on just a 1,000 piece puzzle. Like, fair enough if it was like a larger piece count. But yeah, for something this size, that's just too much time. Um, to be, you know, to be transparent, I am a very impatient puzzler. So of course, this wouldn't apply to everyone. I think. Some people don't mind working on something for that amount of time and especially if they want to sort of spread it out over days or even weeks and they don't mind doing little bits here and there, it might be fine. Or if you really enjoy challenge puzzles and find them very satisfying, then you know, you'd probably enjoy this. But yeah, if you're, you're very like impatient like me where you just like to get a puzzle done and move on to the next one, then this probably isn't for you. Um, so now that I've had my little mini rant, let's sort of talk pros and cons. So pros, obviously the image is really pretty. Um, it's definitely something you could, I guess, hang on your wall or something like that. Um, yeah, the colors are just lovely, you know, so I definitely like how it looks. And yeah, in terms of the, well, the piece quality is kind of mixed. So the good part of the piece quality is that actually the pieces hold together very nicely. Um, the fit's very comfortable. It's not too loose or too tight. And for the most part, you can pick up large sections. Um, it's a little bit of a 50-50. It's not always reliable. Sometimes you end up just pulling off one piece instead of a whole section, but it's good enough for like just moving things around on the board. So, you know, you wouldn't want to do a puzzle pickup, I don't think, but um, you know, yeah, just for the sake of a, a, 
reasonable puzzling experience it's it's good enough um, but let's talk cons so I have definitely got some issues with the quality of the pieces um, and there's a piece here that's missing the top part the colored part of its tab I thankfully found it and I will glue that back on before I take final photos and that sort of thing um, and there's definitely quite a few pieces with little bent corners or tabs um, you know not just a couple there's a, quite a few like I can sort of see them where they're not sitting very flush and you know so I think like the type of cardboard that these pieces are made from is just too thin um, it's like too bendy and like because of that the pieces just get damaged too easily so yeah I think that's a bit of a problem um, I mean I have no idea how this one ended up getting the top ripped off I guess it just got stuck or something and yeah but the fact that that even happened is you know a bit concerning um, and then the other yeah issue I saw with the pieces was that uh, instead of being bent sometimes I saw the layers of cardboard actually sort of splitting and like almost like fraying a bit or almost like you know like when cardboard gets wet and it expands almost a bit like that not that it had gotten wet but like you know the cardboard's just sort of frayed and expanded and you can't really I guess you could maybe glue it back down but yeah so a bit disappointing with yeah the piece quality like it's a shame because yeah the pieces do fit together nicely but the fact that you know this is a brand new puzzle but there's already damaged pieces makes me also think like if you did want to do this puzzle again not that I want to you know is that going to just keep adding to the damage and you know it's not going to last that long um, yeah but a couple of other issues that I had brought up about the puzzle is puzzle dust which there is a little bit on the board but really it wasn't an issue at all so that was pretty good um, that didn't turn out to be much of a problem um, and the glare it like this puzzle is definitely very glossy and I think even in the last uh, time lapse you can probably see a patch of gloss which I just couldn't do much about that's just where my light was shining and you know but yeah even now like there's definitely glossy parts where like it's hard for me to see the color but that being said despite it being so glossy I haven't actually found it to be much worse than a lot of other puzzles that have a, just a little bit of sheen so yeah it's more glossy but it doesn't seem to be worse than other puzzles with similar issues so yeah I mean it could be better it'd be nice if these are sort of matte finish but especially when doing a really tough gradient puzzle like this but yeah, it definitely wasn't gonna, it wasn't as worse as I was expecting. So I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I'm not sure if I have much else to say about the quality and the pieces themselves. I think I've pretty much covered everything I want to say. Um, so I guess let's talk price. Um, for me in Australia, I can only get these on Amazon as far as I know, and these, full price these better co puzzles tend to range between the 40 to 50 Australian dollar mark I'll put the US dollars on the screen but this one thankfully was discounted I think maybe it's an older style and they're trying to get rid of stock or something like that because I got this one and another one at a discounted price so this one ended up being about 23 Australian dollars again I'll pop the US equivalent on the screen um, so for that price I feel like this is okay I mean I'm still with any new puzzle it's still disappointing to get damaged pieces you know especially when you have to end up gluing bits back together like no one wants that um, same with like things like missing pieces and stuff but so that's disappointing you know with any new puzzle whether it's inexpensive or high-end um, but I feel like for the sort of quality of the pieces and the sort of thinner cardboard I would be willing to pay that discounted price like the 20 something dollar mark again if it was a design I really liked so I'm not ruling out never getting a better co puzzle again but I just don't think personally I could justify paying full price for this level of quality um, which is a real shame because you know they have some really beautiful designs and even the box is kind of deceiving because the box is really nice quality very like stylish very like sturdy and everything like that so yeah it's a little bit disappointing that 
the sort of piece quality just doesn't seem to match the rest of you know what the company's offering I guess yeah so um, I guess would I recommend this puzzle um, for the high price point no sadly I wouldn't um, but if you can get these at a you know discounted rate I would say yeah maybe go for it especially if it's a design you really like I think you know the quality is good enough for that sort of lower price point um, I don't know in the US or other countries uh, like how high-end these puzzles are or if it's just expensive for us in Australia because sometimes products are a bit more expensive for us here so you know I think that's up to you to make that call whether you think you know the price is equivalent to like what you're getting like uh, quality wise and value with the puzzle so yeah so bit of a disappointing experience um, I guess one other thing to add is I don't think that this particular puzzle being so challenging and difficult is a fair representation of their range they definitely have a lot of other puzzles that are look like very more uh very like just more average uh difficulty level of a 1000 piece puzzle and a bit more colorful and fun and interesting so i think it really just depends what puzzle you pick but that still doesn't um you know take away from the fact that you know it's probably still going to be the same type of quality and pieces in all of their puzzles so just something to think about but yeah maybe if you're trying this brand for the first time probably don't pick this image unless you're really keen to do a challenge puzzle so i guess in the comments below let me know what you thought of this particular puzzle and you know would you do this one um have you done it what did you think are you into challenge puzzles um and what do you think of better co as a company have you tried their puzzles before and what did you think of them um, you know do you think they're worth the price point I guess yeah let me know your thoughts and experience with Betterco in the comments below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles and for even more puzzle content you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore thanks so much and see you next time bye